We will take our first question from Ezekiel Bergonzi with Somos MMA. Your line is open. Hey, Rafael, how are you? Saludos desde Argentina. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. So, how do you feel after all the things that happened with the new rival and stuff? Yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy camp for me. Uh, for the first time in my whole life, I passed through that. And uh, I had to pull out due COVID in Brazil. And we rescheduled for this Saturday. But like last Sunday, we got a call that Islam was out due to some infection. But I'm glad Paul felt the jump in and we're going to put on a great show for the fans. And how do you feel coming back to lightweight and facing COVID? Uh, how do you feel physically? And what can you tell us about that? Sorry, can you, can you say it again, please? How do you feel uh, coming back to lightweight after having COVID and and after all that happened, how do you feel physically? How how are you? I feel, I feel great. Uh, when I, I when I got the COVID, I didn't uh, it didn't affect my lungs. Uh, I was just with some headaches and a lot of body pain, but nothing not to do with my lungs, which was good. Like uh, ten days, two weeks late after the, you know, I got COVID. I was training normal and I didn't feel anything. Uh, I just felt like a lot of body pain and headaches, but, uh, yeah, coming back to lightweight, it's been so far, it's been a very good cut. My body responding really well. I start my cut, like, you know, my dieting, uh, eight months ago. So it's been a long process. I've been putting a lot of work throughout those, uh, months and, uh, can't wait for Saturday night. Your strategy to fight uh, Paul Felder is different from the one you had to face Islam Makachev? Oh, uh, definitely. Paul Felder is a, uh, is a orthodox uh, striker and Makachev was a softball wrestler. He changed uh, completely to me. I've been sparring with softballs for the past two months and now uh, I'm facing a striker, uh, orthodox. And, uh, but, you know, uh, I got so much experience, uh, and, and for me, it's uh, just like, I had to do a little adjustments and, uh, I'm glad Paul Felder jumped in and we got to save the show. Khabib Nurmagomedov retired and le leave a huge legacy in the lightweight division. Do you have any words about that? <clears throat> Yeah, I think uh, 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 he retired on his prime. I think if he does not have the passion anymore, if uh, he lost his father and uh, he's not fighting for money, he got enough money. If he, he don't have the passion to fight anymore, I completely uh, support his idea of retirement. And my last one, um, before Paul Felder stepped in to fight you, Santiago Ponsinibio challenged you to fight in welterweight. Do you want that match after this one from, of the Saturday? Are you interested? Santiago had his chance. I, I asked to fight him at welterweight. I'm dropping my weight for the past eight months to fight a lightweight. And all of a sudden he jumped in trying to fight uh, a welterweight. So we, 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 he pulled out, he, 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 he denied, he, he, he refused the fight against that until back in, uh, uh, last year. So that's why he, UFC is not giving him any good opponents because he, 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 he refused that fight. Now he's keeping chasing me. So I'm, I'm a lightweight guy now, and I'm going after that title, a lightweight title, not a waterweight. Thank you. And good luck on Saturday. Thank you. We'll take our next questions from Diego Ibas Araujo with AG Fight. Your line is open. Oi, Rafael, tudo bom? Opa, beleza? Beleza. Rafael, a primeira pergunta que eu queria te fazer é sobre a importância do Dedé Pederneiras nesse seu camp. Uh, ele foi seu head coach. Eu li numa entrevista 
Eu esqueci agora onde, acho que foi para Evelyn, enfim, que você mencionou que estava meio sem head coach nos, nas últimas lutas, alguém que coordenasse todo o treinamento, estudasse seu adversário, qual foi a sua importância, se de fato você estava sem head coach nas últimas lutas, e o quanto isso pode mudar na sua performance? Ah, na verdade, eu, eu tinha um head coach, o Parrilla era meu head coach, uh, mas eu acho que eu estava precisando de um cara que... É, é, é tivesse mais envolvido, tivesse é, um, uma galera, uma equipe que pudesse me dar mais é, é, a visão de estratégia na luta, que eu estava notando que eu estava muito sem estratégia e sem treino mesmo, sem sparring. Então, a gente, com essa, com essa situação toda de, de Covid e tal, a gente decidiu, as crianças estudando online, a gente decidiu... É, passar uma temporada no Brasil e eu escolhi o Dedé para fazer o camp lá com ele, foi a melhor escolha que eu fiz, o Dedé é um cara que está muito envolvido, eu não preciso ficar dando feedback para treinador, para treinador de, do Muay Thai, para treinador físico, para médico, então ele é um cara que fica super envolvido e, 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 e agiliza tudo, ele que planeja tudo ali, qualquer coisa, é tudo com ele, então... Tirou um grande peso aí minhas costas, que eu tava meio que comandando meu camp também por muitos anos, então eu acho que isso não é legal. É um cara que é envolvido, entende muito de luta, estratégia, forte de peso também, e eu acho que tirei um, um grande peso dos meus ombros. E você pretende treinar mais vezes no Brasil? Tem algo que você sentiu lá que te fazia falta, que você percebeu agora, que você não tem nos Estados Unidos? Com certeza, eu planejo voltar, fazer os outros camps lá, eu acho que ver é, onde eu cheguei e ver a galera ali batalhando é, para chegar num, num evento melhor, é, eu me vi naqueles garotos ali também, né? Então, a, foi bom também para você dar valor que você tem na vida, então foi, foi tão bom só é, fisicamente, na parte de, de luta, mas na parte pessoal também. Então, foi, foi muito importante para mim essa estadia no Brasil. E para suas próximas lutas, vamos supor que você vai... Se você fizer o camp no Brasil, vai ser na Nova União, vai contar com o Dedé. Se for nos Estados Unidos, como você pretende suprir essa falta de alguém que tire esses pesos das suas costas, como você mencionou? Cara, no, nos Estados Unidos eu vou fazer uma manutenção. Eu não, não vivo em camp, né? É uma manutenção, eu vou continuar fazendo minha parte física, meus treinamentos, eu tenho, eu tenho, eu tenho treinador de boxe, eu tenho treinador de jiu-jitsu, eu tenho preparador físico, mas a gente fechando uma luta, a gente vê uma maneira de a gente é, é, é agilizar o camp, porque eu estou no plano aí de ser campeão de novo do peso leve, então estou é, é, investindo na minha carreira, então é um momento de sacrifício mesmo. Maravilha. Falando desse peso, então, da questão do peso, né? Você volta para os pesos leves. Como foi esse, esse processo todo de, de fazer uma dieta, uma reeducação, sei lá, alimentar por tanto tempo? Eu lembro até que uma entrevista sua com o Alonso, você mencionou que tinha que seguir muito a risca por muito tempo, se de repente você fugisse um, uma refeição, seu peso já subia. Como foi esse processo todo, até pela pressão... Talvez uma pressão psicológica, enfim. Mas como foi fazer tudo isso? E como você está se sentindo agora? Quanto peso falta e com quantos quilos você pretende lutar no dia da luta? Cara, eu, uh, eu pensei, eu vou ter o resto da vida aí para poder comer. Minha carreira não vai, não vai para sempre, né? Então, tenho mais alguns anos aí de carreira e, e é a chance que eu tenho de dar uma reinventada e de mostrar alguma coisa nova. Eu acho que eu subi de peso e tive uma, 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 tive bastante sucesso na minha subida de peso. Eu não vejo muitos lutadores tendo o sucesso que eu tive. Ah, muitas pessoas falam, ah, mas você foi uh, quatro, uh, perdeu quatro e ganhou quatro. Mas eu lutei pelo cinturão, eu ganhei dos meus... Eu não cheguei, eu não subi de categoria e lutei direto pelo título. Eu lutei com os caras ranqueados, subi no ranking, ganhei dois campeões e lutei pelo cinturão. Então, eu cheguei perto de ser campeão ali de duas categorias. Mas agora, nesses, próximos, nesses últimos sete, oito meses aí, eu tenho seguido um programa de treinamento, de dieta muito forte. 
e consegui reduzir meu, 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 meu peso assim, do dia a dia em 8 a 10 quilos. Então, é, o peso está bom, o, peso tá, o corpo está respondendo ao corte de peso. E, e agora é só focar aí e tirar o restinho do peso para amanhã. Mas, e você pretende lutar com quantos quilos no sábado? Cara, eu, eu tiro... Eu tô mais ou menos na forma que eu tava contra quando eu lutei com o Anthony Pett. É, eu lembro que naquela luta eu pesei 78 quilos e meio, assim, no dia da luta. Maravilha, então. Pra terminar, esse processo de encontrar um novo adversário, né? Caiu uma luta em cima da hora. Quão difícil foi? Quantos dias você soube antes da notícia se tornar pública? Quantos dias você já sabia? Quantos adversários foram, né, chegaram a ser negociados, né? E queria que você falasse um pouquinho desse desafio para o Michael Chandler. Se agora já criou-se uma rivalidade, pode ser resolvido no futuro. Cara, eu, a, o, o meu empresário, Giovanni Biscardi, me ligou no domingo falando que o cara saiu da luta, que o Chanchelbo ligou para ele. E até então o Chanchelbo tinha falado que ia tentar arrumar um adversário. E, e eu, a gente começou, eu comecei a pensar... E, e o Michael Chandler é um cara que estava no peso para lutar esses dias aí e está sempre postando foto, é, vídeo, em forma, malhando. Eu achei que poderia ser, e, mas, mas não rolou, não aconteceu. Ele falou que tem outros planos. E eu acho que... E aí o Giovanni foi, é, é, ao Chandler, no outro dia já veio logo com, com o nome do, do Paul Felder. E a gente nunca imaginou que, que eles iriam vir com esse nome. A gente estava pensando em outros nomes, de repente até um peso casado, porque de repente pela, pela, pela proximidade da luta as pessoas não conseguiram bater o peso, mas aí o Paul Feld entrou, então foi melhor, foi uma benção na verdade, entrou um cara melhor ranqueado e, e é isso. Sábado vai ter, vai, vai ter luta boa aí, vamos, vamos botar um show aí para galera. Maravilha. Obrigado, Rafael. Nada, valeu. We'll go next to Mike Bond with USA Today. Your line is open. Hey, Rafael. Uh, apologies if I'm going to make you repeat anything you just said in Portuguese there, but just curious, you know, we're about 22 hours away from the weigh-in scale opening. I know the hard part is probably still to come, but are you surprised how good you feel right now going back to lightweight for the first time in about four years? Oh, yeah, man. I feel... Yeah, I feel pretty much in the same shape that I was when I fought Anthony Pettis. Uh, my body is responding really well. Uh, yeah, so all every goal that we put during the training, uh, during the cuts, my body is, is being like, uh, I've been cutting more weight than the plan. You know, like my body is responding really well. And yeah, like you said, the hardest part is still to come, but we feel pretty confident and uh, the weight, the weight will, be, will come off easily. Why did you ultimately decide to do this? Because I feel like over the past few years and including when I talked to you a few months ago, you said, you know, lightweight, not really too much going to be in my future again, maybe for like a Conor McGregor fight or like a title fight, I'd go back down. But generally speaking, I don't know if I want to put my body through that again. So why do you decide to make this move? Yeah, I'm, you know, my goal is to be a world champion, uh, like I was once again. And, uh, uh, it, it, man, uh, in life, we have to make sacrifices. I think I walked away. I, I had a good run. I fought for the title, but I think um, I'm 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 not too big for Walter Wade. That gap, the 15 pounds gap, is such a big gap. But like uh, once I put that work and I've been I've been changing my whole diet, my whole body for the past seven eight months, and my body is responding really well. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to reinvent myself and prove that I can be a lightweight champion again. Yeah, and a lot, you know, some of the same faces at the top of this division, but a lot of new ones as well. And I think Islam was a guy that, you know, was obviously on the rise and we were going to be interested to see how he would do against someone like you. Um, what do you think about how this different, the division is different compared to when you left it? Yeah, the division, a lot of new guys. 
yeah, it's it's been changing a lot. Uh, all like the top five guys, uh, they really really like cautious to take the next step. You know, it's been kind of a very strategic game playing by then. Uh, back on the days, like everybody fight everybody. I believe we don't have the, the those rankings, and uh, I think these days people are like really cautious. Uh, uh, to, to the next step. Uh, uh, nobody want to take any fight because they want to wait for someone else to take the fight, to wait for someone else results. And I think that it, 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 it slowed down the, the division a lot. Uh, fighters got to fight. Fighters got to fight. You know, you can just hide behind rankings and trying to pick the best fight, the best match, and waiting for results that for fights that is still on the paper. And uh, yeah, man, fighters gotta go there and fight. Yeah, and that's kind of what, you know, helped you make your run towards the title the first time around being so active. Um, I'm curious though, what you think of this fight with Paul Felder now, do you like this matchup better than Islam? Because, you know, we commend you for taking all these fights against wrestlers and guys that are trying to take you down, but it seems like Paul's gonna be the first guy you've faced in a while whose first strategy is to stand with you. Yeah, I was I was training for a softball wrestler, and Paul Felder uh, jump in. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I can I met him and I thank him. He's a you know really cool guy. Uh, uh, it, it was really good for him for, for us. Now we saved the show by him stepping on a five days notice. But he's a striker, orthodox, and uh, he changed for me a little bit. But I'm pretty sure we're going to put on a great show for the fans. Great. Thanks, Afal. You're welcome. We'll go next to Louise Green with MMA Crazy. Your line is open. Hi. Um, you obviously said uh, previously there about the decision to move back down to lightweight. Um, but I'm curious because you expressed an interest before in, you know, getting a fight rebooked with Connor. Are you hoping that you could still, that could still be a possibility down the line if you get back into the win column on Saturday? Uh, I just want to clarify, Conor McGregor is not my goal. I don't want to, mm -hmm. like, I'm not fighting, I'm not drop, dropping back to lightweight division to fight Conor. You know, it's not my goal. I want, I want fight for the belt. Whoever, whoever has the belt, I'll fight. But like Khabib leaving the division, I think will leave the division wide open. And uh, if you look, uh, focus, my focus is 100% on Paul Felder on Saturday. But like you said, being back at the wing column, I think if you look to these top five guys, uh, if you look at Ferguson, uh, Gagey, and Fourier, they all entering, the former interim champions. The only two guys that was uh, for former, uh, champions was me and Connor and Khabib leaving that division I think that fight could be a good fight for the vacant belt yeah definitely and then what do you think about his return and how do you think he does in his rematch against Poirier uh yeah I think he beat him once I think uh Connor is a very good striker and uh yeah uh, I think it's a good matchup for him Poirier is a good matchup for him and does that up the pressure for you at all going into Saturday to get back into the win column against Paul Felder? Sorry, can you say it again, please? Does it up the pressure for you at all going into Saturday with Paul Felder coming on, on you know, such short notice? Do you feel any added pressure because of any of the circumstances? No, I, uh, fight's a fight. Every fight is the fight of your life. Uh, I, I've been putting a lot of work for the past eight months and uh of course I, I feel pressure but like that's part of the game uh, i don't think anybody step on that the octagon without a pressure and um what do you think you can expect to see from felder on saturday and how, how do you see the fight going down uh, he's he got a great striking he's a very technical fighter he comes to fight he got big heart we go we're gonna put on a great show for the fans but I see my, I see on the end of the fight, I have in my hands raised. I put a lot of work and uh, can't wait to show it Saturday night. 
That's great. Thanks. Thank you. We'll take our final questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Your line is open. Hey, Rafael, before the fight with Paul Felder came together, I know you had called for a fight with Michael Chandler, and he had responded. It seemed like you were kind of disappointed in that. Can you kind of give me your thoughts on that whole situation with Michael Chandler? Yeah, uh, he was scheduled to fight uh, three weeks, two weeks ago, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, he he always keeping... When I got the news that Islam uh, got infection, he's not going to be able to fight. Uh, uh, I thought about Michael because he always posting pictures, videos, training, in shape. He just signed with UFC. He didn't fought. And I guess, like, I thought maybe he wants to fight. But like I say, these guys, they always want to pick fights that, that can boost them, that playing very strategic. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, he said he got all their plans, but I respect that. That's it. I, 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 I think different. I think fighters got to fight. And if you're in shape, you're training, if you're always posting videos with nice quotes, like, oh, let's, I'm ready, I'm ready for anything. So you should take fights, but people are different. With that being said, when Islam fell out, you know, obviously it sounded like you were ready to fight no matter who it was, but were you happy? You know, when you got the call about Paul Felder, I mean, considering where he's at in the division, his record, I mean, I don't know that you could have asked for a better fight on, on five days notice, right? Oh yeah, that was that was a great that was that was a great replacement. Um, we could ask for better. That fight, uh, UFC put that name on the table back in August, but it didn't come. You know, didn't work. Uh, didn't you know? Didn't work the fight. I think my weight was wasn't on point yet. We did, we couldn't figure out a date. But like yeah, Paul failed enough. You know. Uh, on a five uh, days notice, he's a guy that comes to fight. We're gonna. It's a more uh, uh, exciting match, I think, for 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 all of us, for the fans as well. We're gonna put on a great show Saturday night. And last question for me. I know you had a lot of respect for Islam, and you you kind of talked about the rankings and the problem with the rankings. But in a way, do you feel like this is actually a bigger fight considering where Paul is in the division? And you mentioned his experience, you know, beating guys like Edson Barbosa and some of the guys he's faced. Do you feel like this is actually a bigger fight and a better way to kind of reintroduce yourself to the lightweight division? Yeah, I believe so. Um, he's a guy that comes to fight. Um, he's not he's not a type of fighter that gonna, that they're gonna go there and try to steal the fight and you know do the those you know you know cage game and you know put me against the wall, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, I, I was very prepared for Islam as well. We got, we put a lot of work in Brazil. We got some judo guys. I was so ready for Islam, but yeah, it, uh, Paul Felder jumping in on a five days notice. Like I said, better ranking, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it could boost me, you know, a, a win over Paul Felder will, will, uh, will give me a, a huge boost compared to Islam. Thank you so much, Rafael. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Rafael. You're all set. Thank you.